7 a.m. in New York. I'm not sure where in California. <laughs> Enough about that. Uh, thanks, Margaret. Okay, this is uh, the first song uh, we're going to do is a Christmas song, uh, but we do it all year round. Uh, I was asked to write this for a Christmas concert in which uh, every writer was asked to write a new Christmas song for a specific artist. And as I began to think about what I had to say about Christmas, I realized that for me, Christmas often has a certain sadness to it because it, it marks the passing of another year. And as the year ends, I think that there are things, some of which I've wanted all my life and that I've been trying to find and achieve and get hold of. And another year has passed and uh, I still haven't gotten them. And this is what I chose to write about. And uh, the magnificent singer who I wrote it for is here tonight, Alex Corey. <laughs> Christmas I think maybe it will finally come true it's a simple wish that everyone has had from time to time so I know you'll understand me when I share my dream with you I want to be rich famous and powerful step on all my enemies and never do a thing I want to be rich famous and powerful so all I have to do in life is sit around and sing. I don't want to work, struggle, or compromise. When I set a goal, I want to reach it right away, because paying your dues, that's just for other guys. As for me, I want what I want, and I want it all today. I don't want to audition. I don't want to take class. I want to be discovered while I'm sitting on my ass. I should not have to suffer. I should not have to sweat. I tried that for 10 minutes once, and look, what did I get? I'm still not rich. Famous and powerful. Barbara Streisand has it all, and I could do what she could do. So why is she rich, famous, and powerful? While I'm still stuck here schlepping through my life like all of you. What does it take to be famous and powerful? Santa, if you're listening, please tell me what to do. What do I have to fake to be famous and powerful? I've done everything I can, and now the rest is up to you. I tried being good. I tried being pretending I was listening once or twice, but the really big stars have made it without it. Was Betty Davis pleasant? Well, I seriously doubt it. Still, she was rich. Everyone adored her, and the world was at her feet, and she was a man. It's obvious that I have gotten nowhere being sweet. <laughs> Now I know I should be counting all the blessings that I've got. My husband truly worships me, and starving I am not. And I suppose good friends and family and health count for a lot. But I have to admit, all that doesn't mean if I'm not rich, famous, and powerful. Oh, come on, don't be so shocked. You know you feel the same as I. If we were rich, famous, and powerful, we could take those agents and casting directors, tiny apartments and back tax collectors, critics and casting calls, chilly rehearsal halls, people who bore us and jump in the chorus and kiss them all goodbye. Is that too much to ask? That was Alex Corey. That, that song is called My Simple Christmas Wish. <laughs> uh, be before I go any further, it's my great pleasure on behalf of all the writers and everyone here this evening to uh, personally thank someone who has been so supportive to all of us, uh, both by her singing our songs, by her 
putting us forward and by her tremendous singing talent, our hostess, Margaret Whiting. Isn't that nice? Told you he was wonderful. <laughs> now, while you're up here, yes. uh, Margaret had a rather exciting thing happen in her life this year. Do you want to tell us what that is? Well, I got married. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, the first anniversary is coming up. I can't believe it. Wow. I looked at Jack, my husband, last night. I said, my God, we've been married almost a year. <laughs> October the 8th. I got the date right. <laughs> Yay. Remember it. Well, uh, when Margaret and Jack got married, uh, it was a very snap decision. They'd been together 18 years or so, so, so we were concerned that they were rushing. Uh, and I, uh, I didn't know what to give them as a wedding present, so uh, I wrote a song about them and their marriage, and uh, Margaret's going to sing it. There's only one problem. Every time I've done it with David so far, I get so emotional, I blow the lyrics. <laughs> and he comes to my rescue. So I hope tonight's an exception, but if not, I know you're there. <laughs> After all these years, and after all this time, you'd think it was an afterthought getting married. After all these nights, so splendid and sublime, who'd have thought that we'd get caught getting married? I loved you so long, you loved me so well. So why in the hell should we change what we've got? But after all these years, and after all this time, we finally had to ask ourselves, why not? To look at us, you'd think the two of us would be the most unlikely people to be getting married. So different in our way, but what you might not see is just how right it feels to be getting married. Now, thank you. For since we first met, we felt so at home with neither a feeling of joy So when you asked again, I listened to my heart, and what I heard it tell me was, of course, of course, since we know we always want to be together, why not when we're sure that this time it's forever? After all these years, after all this time, it's obvious that we should be getting married to celebrate our love so rich and in its prime. What other way than finally getting married? So come, raise your glass, and come drink the wine to all joy and good fortune we've had and after all these years after all this time we're married we're together and we're glad we are glad but we're almost amazing how about that for a gift from David Friedman?
That's a star. Thank you, Margaret. <laughs> Uh, I have the glorious good fortune tonight that uh, the three songs I'm doing, I wrote for three specific ladies, and all of those ladies are here singing them tonight. Uh, this last song is called Listen to My Heart, and uh, I wrote it for Laurie Beachman. Uh, I first met Laurie. Uh, we were both doing Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat on Broadway. She was starring in it. I was conducting it. And uh, we've since done... Oh many nightclub acts, recordings, Laurie has sung tons of my music, and uh, this song, uh, I produced Laurie's first album, and this song was the title song, so I'm really thrilled to have Laurie Beachman here. <laughs> years the 
Friedman. The very best. In that kind of love. But don't. new songwriters on the American cabaret scene. Michelle Browerman, Craig Cornelia, and David Friedman, live at the Russian Tea Room. I can't stand my grandpa. A few years ago, Alzheimer's disease began destroying Joe Stewart's memory. Last time I saw him, he couldn't even remember my name. But perhaps sadder still is how it destroyed his grandson's memory as well. My dad says we used to have so much fun together. 